Hi, I'm Dave from boynaband.com and welcome to day two of my seven day song tutorial on Electro House. In day one, I taught you how to make a punchy Electro House beat. In day two, I'll be teaching you how to make a sexy Electro House bass line using techniques such as feedback distortion and EQing and I'll also talk a bit about the music theory behind the notes I choose. Okay, let's begin. Start by right clicking and creating a combinator and naming it bass. Inside the combinator, right click create Thor Polysonic Synthesizer. Now initialize it by right clicking and clicking initialize patch and click the show programmer to open it up. I'll just put in the notes for this now so we can hear the synth build up. Okay I'll just explain a bit about the music theory now. I've chosen these notes for a few reasons. If I'll just play you. I've put the F root note at the start of each of these little sections here and that just gives a strong hypnotic start to the riff. The rest I've tried not to put too far apart, it's all in the one octave, so the portamento doesn't do anything crazy when I add that. And also, notice how they're only semitones apart from each other in a lot of these occasions. This is called using the chromatic scale. Generally, this doesn't create something very melodically interesting, but it does make ridiculously cool, cocky sounding riffs, which goes really well with this kind of sexy synth effect that we're going to make. Listen to any Fed Legrand or Benny Benassi and you'll hear them use the chromatic scale a lot. So, for this patch, if we actually start making the synth now, we want a very punchy, defined sound, since it's a focal point, but with a bit of texture to make it more interesting. So if I play the beat and then show you what we're going to add, another analog oscillator and a multi oscillator. Now run them through, the two and three buttons here. Take them all down two octaves, because this is a bass effect. Okay. Next, we're going to change this one to a square or pulse wave. So we've got a bit of tech, different texture and also widen up the detune amount on the multi oscillator here. And you can hear that's much more like a bass effect now. These two analog oscillators are acting as the punchy forefront of the sound and the multi oscillator is making the texture of the sound. Next, we want this bass to be sexy. You're going to see me using this technique a few times in this tutorial. Slowly moving between notes can be seriously sexy sounding. So to do this, in this case, we're going to use portamento, which makes the synth slide between the notes that are played. Here's the portamento. At the speed you define with the portamento knob. So if I play this and show you how it changes as I add the portamento, turn it on. Hear that sliding between the notes now. If I take it down a little bit, maybe to about 32, which isn't that much that it takes too long to get to the shorter notes, but still gives that slide effect quite clearly. Now we've got a synth with all the traits we want, it's time to give it a bit of an edge. Right click and create Scream for Distortion. Set it to Feedback Mode. This applies a distortion effect whilst in a feedback loop, which can make some mental sounds. I'll, I'll just show you what it sounds like now. Yeah, some absolutely crazy noises. But I won't be using the higher pitched feedback effects. I just like the default distortion sound applied on this setting. A feedback loop is created when, for example, a microphone is placed near the speaker that the microphone is being amplified through. P1 here on feedback mode controls the distance of the microphone from the speaker and P2 controls the frequency being fed back. So change P1 to full and P2 to zero. That's the basis frequency it can do. Damage control should be about three quarters of the way around as well. Now if we have a listen to that. It's got a bit of an edge to it. That's without distortion. With distortion. Sweet. Now we've got that, it's time to bring out some of the more important frequencies. Right click, create, M class equalizer. Use param 1 to emphasize around the 270 mark. This will just bring up that bass end. Increase it by about maybe just under 10 decibels, something like that, and then widen the bandwidth a bit, about 2.7, 2.8. And then on param 2, we want to emphasize around the 2.5 kilohertz mark. And again, by a similar amount, just under 10 decibels. Now 10 will do. And again, widen the, free, the uh, bandwidth a little bit. So if I play that to you with neither of the parameters on, turn on parameter 1, the bassiness. And then param 2 with our hand. 
that's a lot more defined, don't you think? So we've brought out the high end of the effect so we can be heard as well as felt. And also, since in Electro House, the bass often has to double as the lead synth effect as well. So lastly, we're going to bring everything up to a nice level. So right click, create, M class compressor. Turn the input gain up by about 8 decibels, something like that. Then turn the threshold down to minus 22 decibels and the ratio to infinity to 1. This will mean that anything about minus 22 decibels from the reference point at 0 decibels will be compressed to that level. This just makes the whole effect feel louder and more prominent when you bring the whole level of the patch up. So let's have a listen to that. Nice. And there you have it, a bass effect sexier and more impressive than a hot chick producing quality dance music whilst playing video games. Tune in for day 3 where I'll be adding in some effects to fill it out, as well as a few more synth patches to make things more interesting. See you tomorrow! If you found this tutorial useful, help me out by rating this video, or posting a comment so other people can find it. And don't forget to check out my website, boyinaband.com. Have a nice day!